look at two more examples of graphing polynomial functions. So here we are in part B, given this f of x. Uh, I would like you to do questions one, two, three, and four. So this polynomial was in standard form. That meant that three is our highest exponent. It had a negative leading coefficient. So when it's odd and negative, we know we can think about that graph y equals negative x cubed. So our ends are rising on the left and falling on the right. The maximum number of turning points is always one less than the degree. And if we find the f of zero, we found the y-intercept. Now remember, when you're asked to find the real zeros, it means you're going to need to factor. So I'd like you to find the real zeros, determine their multiplicity, and whether the graph is touching or crossing at each real zero. Okay, so you factored the function. You found the real zeros. Zero has a multiplicity of one. Negative one half has a multiplicity of one. And three has a multiplicity of one. These are all odd multiplicities. It means they are all crossing. So let's put those real zeros onto our graph. We have one at zero. And that, since they're all crossing, I don't need to mark it this time. One at positive three. And one at negative a half. The end behaviors. What were the ends doing? Rising on the left, falling on the right. Oops, what happened to my real zero there? From the outside, rising on the left, falling on the right, and they're all crossing. It worked out beautifully. Try answering these questions here. Here are the intervals where the function is greater than zero or above the x-axis. and the intervals where the function is less than zero or below the x-axis. Let's try this one final question. I just want to point out that this needs to be factored further, so be careful about that. See if you can go all the way to question six and graph this function. Let's just check what you have so far. I hope you have a degree of four. We added the x squared here with that two there. You factored that middle term, so you saw that there are three real zeros. Um, this was a degree that's even with a negative leading coefficient, so both ends are falling. Did you find the y-intercept is 72? If you left the g of zero, give you all of your zeros for x, you would have found that this is a positive 72. And that's actually an important point when we're checking the function graph here. We know that it has to have this y-intercept at 72. Again, I marked the touching and crossing for my real zeros. We said that both ends are falling. So from the outside real zeros, it's falling. Touching here, crossing, going to hit that y-intercept, and then crossing again. Did your graph work out? And then finally, these questions. Notice that uh, here for the greater than or equal, we have just x equals negative 3, that one point where it is equal. And then the other interval is just from negative 2 to positive 2. And when we're saying less than or equal, we didn't have to stop for negative 3, because at negative 3, it was equal to 0. 
As always, in your notes, there are exam questions that you can practice to get you ready for your next test and the final exam. Remember that solutions for these are posted on your class Moodle page.